All right, in the Iron Asylum with Ryan Watson, MTC Super Heavyweight National Level Competitor. This is John Hanson. We're at the Powerhouse Gym. How you doing, Ryan? What's up, John? How are you, man? All right, we're here for your uh, leg workout, Ryan. Um, man, you were in great shape for this video. I think you said you were about 275, very lean condition. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you did in 2012. I know you didn't compete, focusing a little bit more on your business. Uh, what's, the, what's the plan now for uh, 2013? Um, well, actually, I did compete in one show at the end of uh, 2012. I had no intentions of actually competing, but uh, basically, I just got in shape uh, to go out and uh, you know watch the Olympia there, and you know later in the year and watch my friends compete in Olympia. And so I got in shape for that. And so a couple of my clients kind of convinced me to just hold on to my conditioning for another five weeks and do a show. And I said, "What the heck?" You know. So uh, you know, I came back from vacation after partying and living it up, you know, and whatnot, and. Five weeks later, man, I stepped on stage. You know, obviously it wasn't enough time to, uh, you know, correct, uh, properly, you know, prepare for a bodybuilding show of, a, you know, a national qualifier. But still, I played second, you know, and got myself qualified so I can have a good year coming up in 2013. My uh, intentions as of right now are to do the North Americans in September mm -hmm. and then uh, finish it up with nationals in November. So okay. um, that's what's uh, on the map for me right now. Now, I noticed uh, during your leg workout here, I'm sure you're, you know, you're a former football player, and uh, I'm sure you've done a lot of heavy lifting in your time, but for this particular workout, you went a little bit lighter, um, as we'll see a little bit later in the video, you're doing a lot of supersets and even trisets. Uh, what's your philosophy on that as far as, you know, training your legs with the different types of, uh, different types of loads? Uh, well, basically, John, like I definitely, um, if you've seen some of my other leg, leg training videos from back when I was like five, five years ago, ten years ago. I was going extremely heavy, and mm -hmm. just uh, now my approach has changed. I'm dealing with a, uh, you know a few injuries, you know, with a knee and right. possible herniation in my back. So I've got to really modify my training in order for me to stay in the game. And uh, so I'm just trying to try to out train, uh, outsmart the injuries, you know, instead mm -hmm. of just going you know real ballistic and heavy. But I find that doing like a lot of the giant sets, supersets, and whatnot, um, really adds to my conditioning and adds to uh, the actually uh, bringing out a lot more detail. Um, and shape into my muscles, not just size. I mean, I've got the size. I've had it for for a while, especially you know my legs here. But uh, you know, it's always nice. You can you can never have enough detail, you know. And um, I, I just find that the giant sets obviously really save my joints. I don't have to go half as heavy, and but the pumps are incredible, and I just feel like my body responds extremely well to it, you know. Right. Um, so the rest of my rest of the week, my back's not killing me, my knees aren't aren't killing me, and whatnot, and. Like I said, I'm just kind of dinged up right now, so I've, you know, had to, you know, train different ways. So, uh, but it's, my body's still responding to it. You know, I, I love mm -hmm. it. I find that actually I get a cardiovascular benefit out of it as well. So, um, you know, it helps me stay lean and stay tight. And I would think once you already got the size and you got a certain amount of size and strength like you do, doing this different types of training is probably going to add even more to it, you know, because of the volume, right? Yeah, no, not only the volume, but, you know, it's just like uh, the, in, the intensity and, uh you know, just like the lack of rest, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, during during your set and between sets, cause your body to recruit like a lot different, uh, you know, of a muscle fiber. You know, your type two Bs versus your type two A's. So, right. you, you know, you, when you're always doing a set and recovering, like you know, taking a minute or two to recover and doing another set, you're not really getting a lot of deep muscle fibers, and those are the ones that are responsible for the most muscle growth. So, you know, uh, you need to, you know, change up your your training mentality once in a while, and you can't always train and rest train and rest you sometimes you know i sometimes i'll call it like the 15 minute berserk and i'll just <laughs> you know pick out five exercises and see how many how quickly i can get them all done right and uh and i i can't tell you how sore i am the next day after doing something like that you know it's i don't do it like that all the time but you know i, I more i've been doing a lot more frequently lately and my body's you know getting great great response hmm. from it you know i'm staying lean and tight from it um you know i don't really even care about my strength levels at all you know and as you can see from this video, compared to like some of my videos in the past, like my my training has radically changed from like you know deep deep like regular barbell squats to you know a lot more of like this particular exercise is like I consider it a, a hack squat mm -hmm. on the hammer strength V squat machine. It's just extremely easy on my lower back. Um, I feel all the tension placed right on my quads, so like, it's like no real pain in my knees, my back. 
you know, and so I'm able to really effectively target these larger muscle groups, you know, without getting a lot of the other stuff, you know, thrown in um, the mix. Right. And uh, like I said, just keeping add, adding the detail to my legs, you know, so. Yeah. Now, this is, uh, we're in the middle of a tricep here. You're doing, uh, you did barbell lunges first, and then you're doing the squats there on that machine. And then you go right over to the leg press. And what I was really impressed with when I was watching you do this, you did about three or four of these tricets. And every uh, cycle you did, you were increasing the weight. Like you're starting off here with leg press. But I, I, we go a little bit later in the video, you could see you go even heavier with the weight. And you you must have been doing about 15 reps for each uh, exercise, right? Yeah, you know, I, I, I tried to start out my first, uh, my first giant set with about 20 reps. Okay. And then so... Each, you know, time I come through, I actually add a little bit more weight and I'll decrease the repetitions. So, yeah, I am doing, you know, a traditional giant set or, you know, supersetting as you will. But, you know, I'm still increasing the load and I'm decreasing the reps. I'm still almost going to failure pretty much on every set, you know, every exercise. So, um, you know, I'm just trying to really annihilate the legs. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the last set of my, all my, all my reps might be like six, whereas the first set I did, I was all 20, you know, so I'm just okay. trying to hit a different range, you know, and they're different, stimulate different kind of fibers, um, you know, but keeping the intensity up, you know, always trained to kind of full failure, full fatigue. Right. Um, you know, I'm starting out, I'm kind of pre-exhausting here with a compound movement, some lunges here uh, coming off the little step, giving you that little pitch um, on your, your back leg, your trail leg. Mm -hmm. It's actually going to give you a lot more of a stretch at the bottom. That extra, you know, five inches of a stretch at the at the bottom is going to really heavily recruit the glutes. Okay. And it's going to cause my quads to have to contract a lot harder to get me out of the bottom of the movement. So, you know, it's all around. I find it to be a lot better. You don't have to go as heavy. So you're getting more stretch and you're causing, you're, you're placing the muscle at more of a, a muscular disadvantage. So it's got to fire a lot harder to kick you back up there. So okay, yeah, I'm these, glad you mentioned are, that. I was going to ask you. These have become one of my one of my favorite, um, you know, alternatives to just normal lunges, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they, they they just seem to work well for me. So, now, being a tall guy, Ryan, was were legs always hard for you to develop? Because I know a lot of tall guys they have sort of thin legs, and it's a hard body for for them to develop. Um. Well, you know, I've always, I think that uh, I was actually born with pr pretty big legs. I think my mom told me, like, when I popped out, the, the doctor there delivering me said that I was destined to be a football player, <laughs> you know. So um, my legs have always been good size, you know, and especially from, uh, you know, you know, doing takeoffs as a defensive lineman coming out of my stance. Yeah. That's using a lot of legs and hip and glutes. So, you know, my legs have always been in condition, but I love to train them hard, you know, like, train, train them hard. And over the years, I've trained them really heavy mm -hmm. and uh, I've taken tremendous pride in being that guy that's got a, you know, good set of legs. And, um, you know, everybody always tries to use height as a crutch, but I, you know, like, you know, I look at other guys like Tony Freeman and Dennis Wolf, some of these other guys that are a lot, that are, you know, over six foot, six two, and they all have tremendous legs. So, right. I, you know, it's all relative, it's all ratio, you know, that, uh, you know, Height, yes, it can be a disadvantage to some guys, but I think in everybody's structure is a little bit different. And you know, having a training, a smart training mentality, you can actually, you know, figure your body out and you know, train through it. Right, right. Now, when you said you went heavy in the past, how how heavy did you go? Like with squats and lunges? And I stuff? mean, I, I've definitely done um, some sets, you know, above seven hundred before wow. on squats. Okay. Um, I've lunged three sixty five. I got it on video. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, some walking dumbbell, uh, dumbbell lunges, 125. I have a video all of it all on YouTube. So, I mean, I, but uh, you know, I, I find that my legs are growing even better and looking better now when I'm uh, training lighter and, yeah. and do, increasing the volume and not resting hardly as at all. You know. Yeah. And I still, you know, some people swear by reps. You know, of like, you know, 20 all 20 for legs, and other guys swear by no nothing but like threes and, and triples and maybe sixes, but. I'm a firm believer in mixing it always up. You know, mm -hmm. I like to, you know, do a little, little bit of everything. So right, right. Yeah, I noticed. I mean, like you were. This wasn't a light workout at all, and uh, the intensity was super high because you were doing all those triceps and stuff nonstop for high reps. Yeah, man. I I, I think I, I got pretty bad ADD. So uh, you know, I, I don't like to sit around and rest. And I know a lot <laughs> of bodybuilders like to you know do a set and rest. And right. You know, I'm, I I don't know. I think it's you know maybe part ADD, part like my football mentality. But I always like to uh, you know stay moving. You know, I yeah. like to sweat while I train. You know, and yeah. uh, you know it just I, I don't know. I feel like it helps add you know a bit of conditioning to the muscles. Mm -hmm. And um, you know just keep moving so actually nobody talks to you and gets you out of your zone. You know. Yeah. And. Uh, I don't know. It's just a, I haven't always trained like this, but over like the last year, I've really picked up my pace, picked up my tempo, and, and uh, you know, I found after doing you know giant sets, you know, uh, 
that my body just like really adapted well to them. So. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about that one exercise you just did. Uh, that was for the hamstrings. Yes. You, you sort of set it up for yourself at the at the gym here. You use your you anchored your feet under like a lap pull down the pads, and you put a uh, another flat bench right where your knees were. Correct. And then you were just sort of going like a really slow negative, and then pushing your way up. Um, what's that for? I mean, obviously it's a hamstring exercise, but what's the benefit of that? Yeah. Okay. So that that particular exercise, John, is called a glute ham hyper, as you know, and. Uh, Basically, I wanted to demonstrate that exercise um, using a couple pieces of equipment that I believe should be in every single gym, which is obviously a bench and a lat pull-down machine. Now, at Powerhouse in downtown Tampa, we're obviously blessed to have like two, you can see right there in the background, that red machine. Right. We have uh, two glute ham hyper machines, okay? Those are extremely um, extremely effective exercises for the, um, you know, for the hamstring and glute tie and whatnot, but most gyms don't have those pieces of equipment. It's mostly uh, catered more towards, you know, athletes and whatnot. So, right. um, I wanted to demonstrate that exercise um, so you can do it at your own gym. Whoever's watching this can set that up at their own gym and basically, uh, you know, making sure your knees are stable and then tracking in line with your ankles. You know, I, I like to focus on that eccentric phase, that negative phase of the movement, and that's caused a lot of muscular damage to the hamstrings on the way down. Right. So you'll see, I'll get myself set here, make sure it's my, my ankles underneath the pads, keeping a straight line from your knees to your hips to your shoulders. So try to keep your body in a straight line and just fight that negative on the way down. And then you're going to use those hamstrings to really try to contract um, to pull your body weight back up. Right. So your, your hamstrings are getting a lot of work here on the negative, and they're having to contract to pull your body weight up. Now, this is definitely more of an advanced exercise. A lot of people might not be able to start out doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, so they can still do the negatives though. They can still get the negatives and then have to use their, their upper body to really push their body back up to get back in place. But the main, the main way to keep this exercise as effective as possible, just keeping your body really straight and try to feel all that tension right on your hamstrings. Right. And, uh, I swear, I swear to you, this is like by far one of the most effective, um, hamstrings for, you know, for full hamstring development. Cause it's hit them in a completely different manner than it would like an isolated like prone leg curl machine or seated hamstring curl machine. Yeah, you can really see your hands working when yeah. you're doing it. Now, here you're doing a stiff-legged deadlift. You're using a, just a short range of motion to keep the tension on the hams. Yeah, exactly. And I also noticed you put your uh, feet up on a plate. What is that for, to get a better stretch? Yeah, exactly. That's, it's, by stretching the calf right there, it's going to place a position where the hamstrings are having to be recruited a lot, a lot quicker in the movement. Right. And like you said, I'm working that partial range of motion so that the tension, I'm trying to feel it, always on, the stretch always on the hamstring, and I'm trying to squeeze the glutes in the way up. But I don't want to, um, if I come all the way up, then you, you take the tension off the muscles, you know. And mm -hmm. when you, even if you give it a second to relax and you do 10 to 15 reps, that's 15 seconds of relaxation, you know. Right. So a lot of my, a lot of my exercises, I'm always trying to do constant, you know, tension. So, um, the, the, t you know, time under tension, the more the, the muscles are under load for the longer periods of time, you know, the more stimulus is going to get and the more it's going to be, you know, caused it to, to grow. So. Right. Okay. And then you're finishing off with a seated leg curl. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I could finish it up with a with a prone leg curl as well, um, but I did the seated just because it's a lot closer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I actually I find I, I like the seated leg curl better than I do the lying leg curl. I just feel like, you know, when you really bring that those heels, those ankles up underneath you, you can just get an extra squeeze, extra contraction that you might not feel in, um, you know, on, on a lying leg curl. And, right. Uh, but like I said, I use this one because it's much closer to uh, the area we were working in. Okay. And. Uh, uh, it's just like a smooth machine, a hammer strength leg curl. You know, it's um, even on the video, you can see when the ankles come back, you can see like a little small area in the hamstring fire at the very end of the movement, you know, and so. All right, Ryan, and I just want to mention anybody, if they're interested in reaching you, just go to ryanwatsonfitness.com. And uh, thanks again for joining us in the Iron Asylum for this awesome leg workout. Take care, Ryan.